Different profiles that will land you a job in software industry in Canada. We will discuss in this video. Hey everyone, I am your average guide Sahil Gogna. Welcome back to another video. So for past couple of weeks, I have been getting a lot of queries around different profiles related to software development industry. So in this video, we are going to discuss the job requirements, the salary you can expect and most importantly, should you choose a university or a college if you want to land a job in those profiles. The aim of this video is to provide you a brief overview of different profiles and to help you choose a path that will lead you to these roles. So without any delay, let's get started. Firstly, let's talk about the different profiles related to web development industry. As the title suggests, you are to design a website, but it's not that simple. So there are majorly three profiles that comes under the realm of web development. The first ones are the UI UX designers, second one are the front end developers and third one are the full stack developers. So depending upon the role, they have different kinds of daily jobs responsibilities. Let's first talk about the UI or UX designers. So depending upon the size of the company, these two roles are generally different. But if you are working at a small company or a startup, then one single person might be doing the same task. So what is UI? UI stands for user interface designers and UX designers are the user experience designers. As a UI designer, your main role is to interact with the client, get the business requirement and convert them into a mockup. And as a user experience designer, your role is to look into the ease of use of that design. So if a complex action is involved in, let's say there's a form on a website and user need to select different options, then your role will be to look into whether it will confuse a user or it's easy to use. So that's the role of UI and UX designer. So once a mockup has been prepared and it has been finalized by a team, it's then passed to the front-end developers. So as a front-end developer, your aim is to use different technologies and to convert that mockup into the actual website. But that website, it will be without any functionality and it will be simply without any action and it's just a template that you see on the screen. After that has been done, the next comes the role of full stack developers. So depending upon the company, a full stack developer can also play the role of the front end developers, but their main task is to design the logic of the website. So what, whenever you click something, so something happens at the back end and there are some changes that's been, that are being made in the databases and you get a response, you see different things on the screen. So everything that happens at the back end, that's handled by the full stack developers. So now let's talk about the different skills that you require to land a job into these profiles. So firstly, if we talk about UI UX uh, designers, the main thing you should know is the Photoshop. Then there's a tool called Sketch, Figma, Zeppelin and Envision. And if we talk about the front end developers, then you should be very good with the basics of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap. Like these things should be your bread and butter for, you, for your daily breakfast. Apart from that, knowing some JavaScript frameworks like uh, Angular or some JavaScript libraries like React, that will definitely give you an edge. And if you talk about full stack developer, again, it depends upon like what's the type of backend they have. So it can be a MERN stack, it can be a mean stack. So they can be using a Spring Boot uh, backend. So depending on the company, you need to have different skills. For the salary, I visited a lot of websites like Glassdoor, Indeed, and I checked the median salaries. For UI UX designer, the median salary was around 70,000 Canadian dollars per year. And for the front end developers, it was around $80,000. And for the full stack developers, it was around eighty dollars to $85,000. But if you are a fresher, like this was the median salary, and it's generally calculated with the lowest salaries and the highest salaries so it depends upon them but if you are a fresher you can easily earn up to 60 to 70 thousand dollars per year and the main reason i'm bringing this point is because when you are here as a student so it's a very high probability that you can get a part-time job in these fields before ending this web dev profiles so I would like to add one point. If you have a good knowledge of CMS like WordPress, Magento or Shopify, then there will be a lot of scope for you here in Canada, even for the part-time jobs, because there are a lot of small companies that needs a website and they need the uh, developers who are good with these skills. So a lot of my friends, they worked part-time into these roles. And if you are working, then you can easily get up to $25 per hour. So I would suggest you like, even if you are uh, planning to go into the above three roles that we have discussed earlier, I would suggest you to be good with these skills because these can land you a good part-time job. Now coming to the next question, should you choose a university or a college if you want to land you these profiles? The answer is you can choose anything. So the main thing is you should be able to uh, prepare an end-to-end -end, uh, website once you are into that profile and it doesn't matter if you're a university or a college graduate. Just what matters are your skills. Let's move on to the next profile, which are the mobile application developers. 
As the name suggests, their role is to develop the, all the applications that we use on our smartphones. So they can be the Android developers or the iOS developers. And the basic skill requirements is that you should be good with your logical ability. And for Android, you should be good with Java and Kotlin. And for iOS, mainly whatever the profiles that I looked into, they were asking for Swift. Some of the profiles they were ask, also asking for the Objective-C. So depending upon the profile, the skills can vary. And uh, if we talk about should you choose a university or a college, the answer is it really doesn't matter. That matters is that you should be able to prepare one end-to-end -end, uh, mobile application when, when you are a graduate and when you are appearing for an interview. And one key point that I would like to list here is that once you are appearing for the interviews, make sure that you have at least one or two uh, your mobile applications that have been uploaded on the Play Store or on the app store, depending on the profile you are applying for. If we talk about the salary, so I get a lot of questions around this that are these profiles in demand here in Canada and will you get a job if you graduate from a college and something? The, the answer is like there are a lot of job opportunities in this one and you can earn a good salary if you apply for the mobile application development roles. As an Android developer, you can earn up to a median salary of $88,000 Canadian dollars per year. And for the iOS developers, it's $82,000 per year. And if you are a fresher, again, you can earn up from $65,000 to $75,000 very easily. So if you are interested in mobile application development, don't think twice, just go for it. So now let's talk about the next profile, which is the DevOps engineer. So as a DevOps engineer, you have to take care of the processes that comes in between the develop development cycle and the production cycle. So what do I mean by this? So whenever a de developer designs a new feature, it has to go through a system before it's actually deployed to the production. So as a DevOps engineer, you have to make sure that with all the new features, that system doesn't break. I would really like to know about this uh, in detail. That's why I will be inviting someone from Canada who is a DevOps engineer very soon so that we all can learn together about this profile because this profile is a very high paying job here in Canada and you can earn up to $98,000 per year uh, as the median salary. And uh, talking about should you choose a university or college, I wasn't able to come across any college that provides any specialization in these types of uh, job profiles. And even I talked to DevOps engineers and they told me that you need to be good with your logical ability and whatever they, they are asking in the profile. And in the end, it won't matter if you are a university graduate or a college graduate. Moving on to next profile, let's talk about the QA engineers, or we can also call them QA analysts or the software testers. So their main role is to test the application that has been finally developed to make sure that it's the bug free. And what do I mean by bug free is that they have certain number of test cases that has been defined and that can break the system. So they have to make sure that when those scenarios occur or those things are happening, the system doesn't break or the application is working fine. Depending upon the scenarios, they might need to do the manual testing or they might need to use some tools for the automation testing. If we talk about the skill requirements, then you should have a decent logical ability or you should be decently good with data structures and algorithms. Then you should have excellent troubleshooting skills. If we talk about the freshers, so whenever a company hires a fresher as a QA engineer, they generally train that person with all the softwares or with all the tools that they are using in their company. In that case, you just need to focus on your profile development and you need to do good at your university or college and there's not any prerequisite for these type of profiles. If we talk about choosing a university or a college, it's not any clear requirement, but there are a lot of universities like in Korea University that provides the masters in QA. That's a sort of specialization that you can choose if you want to land into this industry. Or, or, and also there are a lot of colleges that provide you the diplomas in QA. Either way you can go and all you need to do is to perform well at your college or university and to have a strong profile. Talking about the salary, if you are a fresher, you can easily earn from $50,000 to $60,000 Canadian dollars per year. And the median salary is around $65,000 per year. Moving further, we will be talking about data analyst, data engineer and data scientist role. So let's first talk about the data engineer roles. So as a data engineer, you will have to write the ETL operations. And what does ETL operations mean? Extract, transform and load. So you will get a data source, which can be, uh, the data can be structured or unstructured. And then you have to write certain transformations depending on the business logic and at the end you have to store that data into a data warehouse. So next comes the role of a data analyst. 
So as a data analyst, you will need to consume the data from that data warehouse and represent that data into a dashboard or a graph uh, using different data visualization tools. And as a data scientist, you will need to write uh, different predictive models based upon the previous data. Let's take a scenario. Let's say that a data engineer is able to store a company's sale data into a data warehouse and it's a festival season. Then the role of data analyst will be to consume that data and to present that data into a dashboard using different graphs and using different visualization tools. And the role of data scientist will be to predict that on basis of previous year's data which products are capable of performing better this year. So talking about should you choose a university or a college for these types of roles, I would suggest you to go for a university. There are a couple of reasons I would suggest a university and not a college. And the major reason is that whenever you're applying for these profiles, the companies, they either look for the research students or they look for the previous experience and they look for at least three to five years of experience for these types of profiles. So if you are a bachelor student and you end up choosing a course here in Canada, which is in, in a college and after your graduation, you will end up without the experience, without the industry experience, I should say, and without the research experience. And then at the end, you might not be able to find a job in that profile. So I would say if you want these types of roles, definitely go for a university. If we talk about the skill requirements for data analysts, you need to be very good with your Excel skills and you need to be good with Python and some data visualization tools such as Tableau or Power BI. And if we talk about data engineer, then you should be very good with the data, big data frameworks like Hadoop, Spark. And uh, for the programming language, you can either choose Java, Scala or Python, like all of these three are in demand here in Canada. And apart from that, you need to be good with the distributed systems, uh, distributed messaging systems such as Kafka. And also you should be good with your AWS uh, skills. And uh, if you talk about data scientists, uh, you should be very good with your Python skills, your statistics, and then you should be good with ML or NLP. So like there are a lot of concepts that goes into these things. So that, that's the reason that I suggested you to go for a university. So these are all the skills that you require for these types of jobs. If we talk about the salary, so as a data analyst, you can get a salary from 60,000 to 65,000 Canadian dollars per year. And if you talk about the salaries of data engineers and data scientists, you can easily get up from 80,000 to 90,000 dollars per year. So moving on to the next profiles, I get a lot of questions from students that they have their bachelors in computer science and they even right now their masters is related to computer science, but they are not that good with programming or they are not interested in programming. So there are a lot of profiles that are technical profiles in which you need to have a technical mindset, but then specifically you don't need to do any kind of programming on your day to day basis. So if we talk about those profiles, the first one is the information security analyst. As an information security analyst, your key role will be to check the logs for the systems and to make sure that there's not any unusual activities on the system. And in case there's some unusual activities, your task will be to tackle up those activities to come up with a solution and to make sure that such system breach do not happen in the future. If we talk about the skills, these types of jobs don't require you to be very good with programming, but still you will need to know basic of scripting like uh, Python or maybe some batch scripting or if you have a networking background, then it will be plus while you will be finding a job in, in this field. And if we talk about whether you should choose a college or a university. So in, in this case also, like there are a lot of colleges that are providing your diplomas in, in this area and also their universities. And if you ever get a choice, definitely go for a university just because it will provide you a good environment. And even if you choose a college, then it won't make you any harm. So the main thing is that you need to uh, have a strong profile and uh, just learn up the skills that are being constantly asked in the job description of the different job profiles. So moving on to next profile, it's the business analyst. So a business analyst has a key role in all the development cycles of a project, be it the requirement gathering, be it the testing phase or be it the development cycle itself. So as a business analyst, you have to make sure that all the business need of the stakeholders, they are converted well into the technical needs so that the development team, they can work on it smoothly. According to a requirement, a BA might need to work with SQL, you might need to work with the, some cloud computing, or they might need to work with some uh, visualization tools like Power BI or Tableau. So a role of BA is very diverse. If we talk about whether you should go to a university or college, then again, for these profiles, it doesn't matter. All it matters is like, what are the skills you have? And there's one certification that I would suggest, and it's called ECBA certification, and it's purely for the people who want to go, who want to work as a business analyst and they are the freshers. So I would definitely suggest you to go for these types of certifications. 
and uh, if we talk about the salary you so you can make from sixty thousand dollars to seventy thousand dollars per year if you are applying for ba role so moving on to the last profile for today is the role of a project manager so as a project manager you are the first point of contact between the client and the team and your main role is to come up with the estimations for the project be it the estimation of time or be it the estimation for the resources that will be utilized if you're interested in the role of project management manager then I will be coming up with a detailed video next week in which I will be talking about the certifications that you can do, what are the skills that you require and also how much you can make per year if you are a project manager. So stay tuned for that video. So guys, this was a today's video about different roles that can lead you into software industry here in Canada. I hope you have liked the video and please make sure to subscribe the channel. Let me know in the comment section below for which profile would you like me to make a detailed video. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.